Surviving the post-apocalypse is a dangerous business. It's filled with tough moral choices, desperate violence, and horrific monsters. But that doesn't mean you can't look fabulous. Absolutely lovely. You're gonna have to shoot me, because I ain't giving you shit. It's gonna take a lot more to impress me. Let's just hug this out and get it over with. What do you say? You can play it however you want, tough guy. Got a dog, baby. I love her so. Nothing else like her anywhere you go. Man, she... What do you think of the water? It's awful. <laughs> Isn't it, though? You support the news? This really isn't any of my business. She's just the way I want it to be. A million times harder than TNT. Add Victorium initiate. He doesn't even know what that means, Halen. I'm only in it for the spiffy uniforms. He has the potential of becoming one of the best. Take it easy, yikes. There's an entrance test. Up yours too, buddy. Never mind. I'll find you! Find milk. Drink milk. Welcome to the Commonwealth, where everyone has a problem and you have a variety of solutions. Fallout 4 is a game of massive size and polish. There are so many stories, Bajo, I just don't know where to start. Oh, me either. The game is just so big. Genius is restless, darling. There's so much to talk about. The punchy writing. Now, where was I? This took a weird turn. The dark humour. What's with all the bodies? We do have a lot of satisfied customers, don't we? They almost never leave. The rich combat and deep RPG mechanics, the music, the desolate wasteland imagery, has a face with whiskers that scratch, the fidelity of the visuals, let him chop my meat. It's got it all. But why don't we start at the beginning, Hex? Which means, spoiler alert, we need to talk about the first part of this game. Yes, you have been warned. That looks nice. After some facial mm. tweaking, your story begins in a time of worldwide political unrest. Both nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. Struggles over scarce resources have put the powers on edge, which leads to the inevitable nuclear outcome. The bombs start to fall. Yes, you quickly grab your family and make your way to the vault and barely survive the blast. Oh my God! But, unbeknownst to you, the Vault Overseer has an ulterior motive. Just follow the doctor here. He'll show you where to go. All right, you three. Follow me. You and your partner are instantly cryogenically frozen. Four, three. Then this happens. Your partner is dead, your child is gone, and so is the world that you know. What an intro, Bajo. The fear and adrenaline you get from the sirens going off and running for the vault, panicked conversations with my neighbours around me, and their fear only adds to the intensity. Just help me pack it up! It's genuinely terrifying. And I think that's because nuclear war is a threat that we as humans can identify with. Yeah, it's a reminder that we're the first creatures that have existed on this planet in four and a half billion years that have devised a way to quickly wipe out everything. Yeah, humans, we're great. <laughs> I'm so glad this game has more of a setup to the world now. Although I would have liked a little bit more of a heavy emotional moment when you came out of the vault. I mean, you've just seen your partner murdered in front of you and your baby taken away, but all the conversations I had directly after that were just a little too blasé. They... They killed him. Oh, Mum, these things you're saying, these terrible things, I, I believe you'll need a distraction. I don't know, I interpreted that more as you're just overwhelmed by everything that has happened and you're trying to deal with it. Things do start to develop in more interesting ways when you catch up to the main storyline about 15 to 20 hours in. She was trying to keep them from taking Sean, and they... They just... It's okay. You don't need to say anything more. Yeah, and 15 to 20 hours is nothing in Fallout time, is it, Bajo? No, it's not. I spent about that long just trying to figure out what to wear hex. I have a new rule now. If I haven't worn it in five levels, I scrap it. <laughs> the thing that first struck me about this game, Hex, is that more than the others, all the characters in this world are just living out their lives, and you're really butting into them. What is it? You know what? Never mind. I'll handle it myself. This doesn't involve you. You stop waving that gun in my face. 
or it's gonna involve me. That's it. You're dead. Post-apocalyptic Boston is a troubled place where the war between humans and synthetics has everyone on edge. Are you human? Human as the day I was born. Well, you do look human enough. I'll be watching you. And you have a voice now too, which adds so much more to the interactions. Plus, it's brilliant voice work from both sexes. I'll take a look. Sure. Let me know if you see anything you like. Do you mind if I just take a look around? I'm sorry, only paying customers are allowed beyond the reception area. I can't afford that. Sorry to hear that, sir. Do come back again. Ajo, I love that simple conversations with people in the world can start multi-stage narrative events, such as this story with a robot teacher's aide who you teach how to love. Do you think you can have it for someone, even if the two of you are very, very different? And the next time you enter that city, you might witness them getting married. Are you sure about this? You're perfect. I only wish I had realized that sooner. Then by the power invested in me? Uh, sweet. Kind of. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to work. And a classic Fallout style, when you have interactions with people in the world, you're often faced with tough choices about what you want to say. Wait, skinny. You can't always predict the consequences. Say the wrong thing and someone might not even talk to you anymore. I'm getting bored. Why don't you make yourself scarce? Bitch. What did you say? Yeah, and if you don't have enough points in the right perk or just get a bad chance roll, then you might not be able to solve the problem peacefully. Put down the gun. Then we can talk this through. No. No, he'll kill us both! Then again, you might not want to. You know what? Just kill him. What? No! I, I get so upset when I can't persuade people to do what I want, Bajo. You know what? I changed my mind. I don't think I want to sell her just yet. But then again, I love that that happens. It's great RPG stuff. Yeah, it's so hard to resist the urge just to load an old save file and try again. Personally, I love playing the joke because I just love provoking people and seeing what kind of reaction you get. Look, dumbass, that's not how baseball was played. Hey, if you're such an expert, how do you think it was played? The teams would also beat the spectators to death. That's how the term spectator sport got started. Oh my god. And I think the writing is fantastic. Even 30 hours in, I'm still being surprised and chuckling along to the conversations and characters that I meet. All of our coffee is heated to a perfect 200, 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You might want to stand back. And thanks to a new cinematic camera style, the design of these interactions and conversations are so much more organic now. I love that you can just back out and walk away from conversations too without pressing a button. A benefit. The atom bomb. Bioengineered plagues and FEV. And if you take too long to respond, they'll all question why you're being so quiet. It's very rude, just standing there like that. All right. It just feels normal and, and natural. Yeah, I think my favorite part of the conversations though is when you try and skip dialogue because your character will actually make little grunts and try and hurry people along. And you are one of the good guys. Enough. Anyway. Genius. I also like the way the story is so cleverly told through objects that are placed in the world around you, whether it's notes you find on terminals or the way corpses are littered about. I mean, I don't even know what happened to this guy. It's so clever, isn't it? I just love that you're always asking yourself, what happened here? Why these guys camped here? Without a doubt, the hardest part of this game is just trying to get to your quest marker without stopping along the way. Yeah, I think it's actually impossible. Yeah, I know. There's always some event to take part in, some noise off in the distance which catches your attention, or just explore a spooky house which looks cool to explore. You can enter so many of the buildings in the cities in downtown Boston too, they've really upped the density of the zones, where one little pipe or door can lead to hours of gameplay and action. And every terminal and conversation has a chance to add a marker to your map, and this makes you so inquisitive about the world because you don't want to miss out on a single thing. Bye. Yeah, and the best part is you don't have to do anything in order, really. And that's so integral to the wonderful flow of this world design. If you just randomly wander into a place and clear out the enemies, you'll probably learn something or pick up an item that you'll be able to hand to someone later. I can see why that Solomon guy is willing to pay so much for these ferns, cause... <laughs> let me tell you, getting walkways set up here has been a real pain in my ass. It's such a free system, and I love how easy it is to navigate the terrain. I mean, you can sprint quite fast. Yeah, you quickly learn to be careful around water, though. I'm 
Oh, those Milurks, Hank. Oh, so scary, Bajo. The sound of their scuttling will haunt my dreams. And I'm gonna say it, I'm, I'm happy they've put more color into this world too. In general, this isn't the sort of game environment that I truly enjoy wandering about in Bajo. I do tend to be a bit biased towards postcard-worthy fantasy landscapes and collecting herbs and brightly coloured fields. It's just not quite the same collecting brain fungus. It's the opposite for me, Hex. I'm sick of beautiful forests. Give me a dank post-apocalyptic <laughs> wasteland with rad scorpions and super mutants. Girls! <laughs> Girls! Watch out! Watch out! There's a two-legged animal running about. And I find this game so beautiful, especially the interiors, where you can tell they've really upped the detail. I think this really is an incredible depiction of the post-apocalypse. Our unit has sustained casualties. And every now and again, you're taken high into the sky on a tower or a broken highway, and you can see just how much there is out there to explore. And you can actually go there. It's so impressive. And now with this fallout, you're not just one person on a mission. You're becoming a leader. We decided if you came through for us, we'd join up with the Minutemen again. If we want things to get better, we've got to start helping each other. You'll be building communities. Our food supplies are running low. And even connecting them together. See you there in a day or two. And this is the anchor of the game. You now have a place to call home. And it's all done with a deep house building and resource management system that we're still very much coming to grips with. Yes, and just a warning, if you're a little OCD about a tidy house, then this is going to be your worst nightmare. Or dream come true, I'm just not sure. There is a lot to clean up and build and manage and improve upon. Yes, and the better you make your base, the more likely it is to be attacked by raiders. Who's there? It's pretty exciting the first time that happens, Hex, and I'm just so happy to have a place now to hang my power armor and my mole rat trophy heads. And now junk is useful for more than just a few caps. This is a big deal. Everything you pick up, pencils, clipboards, desk fans, it can all be automatically turned into materials at your workbench for building. The house building controls do take some getting used to though, don't they? Yeah, who decided that it should be the same button to pick something up as it is to select something in a menu? Oh, that drove me nuts. I mean, the inventory system in general could be a lot clearer, I think. As someone who hasn't spent hundreds and hundreds of hours with these games, it took me a long time to get used to the Pip-Boy interface again. I mean, the layers of the tabs and the menus and putting on armor and trying to sort through all of your stuff, it's just a mess. Yeah, I agree that the menus aren't great, but I also kind of like that. You're dealing with this kind of primitive technology full of weird quirks. Kind of like you've got an Amiga strapped to your arm. Ugh. I do think the controls are a bit easier on PC, though, with a mouse. Hmm. Well, they have improved a lot of the other controls, which is good. I'm still the word. Looting, for example, which you're doing a lot of, is very simple and painless. They've prioritised what you'll probably want to take first, like ammo and weapons, to make life easy for you. I love how true this game is to survival. And looting is such a necessity here that you treasure items of even the smallest value. Yeah, I can't stop collecting plungers, and I don't know why, but I just love them. Very serious implications. Wouldn't you agree? I gotta get them all, Hex. Well, let's get to the combat, shall we? Because that's changed quite a lot too. Yes, and I think it's fair to say that the combat in the previous games and in Skyrim 2 never quite matched the quality of the rest of the game. They were all incredible RPGs first and average action games second. But that's all changed now. You can actually play this like a shooter. Where you aim will actually hit, rather than some unseen dice roll deciding where the bullet should go. And the hallmark of the series, the VATS system returns. It lets you select different parts of an enemy to attack and harkens back to the old school turn-based roots of this series. And now as you use VATS, you'll slowly build up a critical attack bar. And you can save this up and unleash it on tough enemies, which is a great idea. Yeah, and you'll want to save it too, because VATS no longer pauses time. It just slows it down. So enemies get closer and closer or sometimes move into cover, forcing you to make quicker decisions. It is scary, especially when you're fighting ghouls. Oh, I do not like them at all, Hex. This leads to some terrifying encounters, and I just love this combat system. The sneaking around for extra damage, the vats, and I love that you can quickly switch weapons to quickly finish off enemies. But you still have some issues with this combat, don't you? Yeah. It's just that thing of having to jump into my inventory mid-fight to re-equip grenades or scroll through my food to heal up. 
all that stuff is just a bit too fiddly for my liking. The fiddliness is the best part. Why? Well, because you get in these awful situations where you need to go through and find food quickly and try and switch weapons and pick something where you've got ammo and get out of it. That's half the fun. I do like how many legendary enemies there are, though, who appear more on higher difficulties and drop crazy powerful gear. Yes, it's how I got my favourite weapon in the game. The explosive double barrel shotgun. I actually feel guilty for using it because it's just so powerful and destroys everything. There is so much gear now too. And if you weren't busy enough already, you can now upgrade armour and every weapon has stacks of mods. There's just so much customization. It really helps keep that combat fresh. Mm, I really like the way they've handled the power armour. It's now a sort of mobile tank powered by a scarce resource. And once again, you can upgrade and paint it to your liking. And it just looks so intimidating too. Yeah, it's great for those times where you just need a bit more armor and firepower to get through. Enemies have evolved to move a bit more naturally too and have plenty of new AI routines and animations like burrowing underground or taking cover while shooting. The companion systems had an overhaul too. Yeah, and they have their own stories and moral codes. I mean, think about the life we lead. They will react to your actions and can even leave you if they don't like your choices. It's always about the money with you, isn't it? I'd be honored to join. Yeah, is honored the word? You certainly feel more connected to them this time around. They're not just another gun in a fight. Yeah, I'm totally invested in their stories. They do have a few AI quirks, but I think that's forgivable. And they're much more manageable too now than compared with Skyrim, where I just lose them all the time. <laughs> I especially love running with the plucky journalist Piper, who I successfully flirted with. I like having you close. Oh, uh, thanks, Blue. That's, that's awfully sweet. And then quickly unsuccessfully. You're a hell of a friend, you know that? Just friends, huh? But a friend for life. There's also Nick Valentine, the hard-boiled detective who's also a synth. So you think this institute is responsible? Well, they're the boogeymen of the Commonwealth. Something goes wrong, everyone blames them. And one of the coolest characters in the game. Now ain't the time, let's blow this joint. I mean, my favorite companion is still a dog. Come on. I mean, there's something about caring for an animal as well that you just feel like you have this massive responsibility and any stim packs I needed to keep him going, I would have no hesitation using them on him. His animations are beautiful too, aren't they? They're so real. Yeah. It feels like a real dog. There's one moment where I was like standing out, looking out over a, you know, the expanse, over it, like standing on a cliff, and then I looked up and he was standing out there as well. <laughs> and he was like, Posing. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I love that you can give him goggles. Hey. And it's great that he can fight for you as well, and he can find things. Although he didn't always help me in the way that I would have liked. <laughs> what is it, boy? What have you found? Well, we should wrap this up. Hex, what are you giving it? Well, this is a game full of mysteries, many of which you may never unlock just from choices or decisions you've made, or maybe a door that you decided to walk past and never go inside. But it's a very wild walk through the wasteland. I'm giving it four and a half out of five stars. I just love it so much. I love it. Every single part of this game is so satisfying. The click, click, click of the vats. The little cash register sounds you hear when enemies go down. Don't underestimate us again. The thunk of placing something in a house, collecting plunges. Some bold claims by our intrepid reporter. And most importantly, all the stories and secrets that you uncover. There aren't many games in this tier for me, Hex. It's ultimate digital satisfaction. I'm giving it five stars. The love's the liveliest. <laughs> <laughs>